No one ever wants to be ashamed. No one ever seeks after shame. It never is the, the object of pursuit. I really want to be ashamed. Shame is always, um, is always avoided, never sought after. Yet at some time, at some point in everyone's life, they will have shame in some way. Even for those in Christ, as you're walking with the Lord, when you look back, you see shame, right? What fruit had you in those things of where you are now ashamed? But as we're walking with the Lord, when we look forward, then there's no shame. Jesus was teaching on the Sabbath day in a synagogue, as was his custom. We often uh, found him there. He was always in the synagogue on the Sabbath day. There was a woman there this Sabbath day who had a spirit of infirmity, a spirit of infirmity, not just an infirmity. She had a spirit of infirmity, and she'd had it for 18 years. That's a long time. And Jesus said she was also a daughter of Abraham. So she was not on the outside looking in. She, she belonged in the synagogue. She was, a, she was a Jewish woman. Jesus saw her and called her to him and, and said, Woman, thou art loose from thine infirmity. And he laid, her hands, laid his hands on her, and she immediately was made straight and glorified God. Well, this didn't happen every Sabbath day. The ruler of the synagogue was indignant. He was angry at this, this uh, working of a miracle. You've got to ask, how? <laughs> Why? What would make a man angry that this daughter of Abraham was healed from her infirmity that she had been bound with for 18 years? In fact, this ruler of the synagogue was so indignant that he, he, made, a, he made a new rule right then and there. No healing on the Sabbath. You can only be healed Sunday through Friday. No. Come then and be healed. As if it was up to his discretion of when people would be healed. Mm -hmm. Well, in, in that way, he reduced this, this miracle of healing to status of work mm -hmm. because it was work that was prohibited on the Sabbath day. Uh -huh. And so he estimated this healing just to be work. Mm -hmm. Don't work on the Sabbath day. He was, in, he was indignant. Jesus asked them, he asked them all, why do you, on the Sabbath day, loose your animals from a stall and lead them to water? And why should then this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, not be loosed from this spirit of infirmity? And they were ashamed. Their, their hardness of heart was immediately exposed by Jesus' parable. You, every Sabbath day, you, you loose your ox and lead it, lead it to water and take it back and tie it up again on the Sabbath day, and you're angry that this woman was loose from a spirit of infirmity, having been bound for 18 years? Their guilt was made obvious. Their, their indignation that was produced by, by some... Um, by some desire, by some drive to, to uh, adhere to the law, their desire was very misplaced. Their desire towards the, toward the code of the law was actually at the expense of people. And when their guilt was made obvious, their foolishness was laid out in the open for everyone to see, and they, they were ashamed. They, wish, they really wished they hadn't said that. They were ashamed. Their scale of value was very skewed. Their, their motive of concern was, was way off base, and they, they were ashamed. Mm -hmm. yep. Nahash was a king of the Amorites, and he died during David's reign as king. And when he died, David sent messengers to Ammon, to Hanan, which was uh, Nahash's son, who became king in his father's place, and he sent messengers and ambassadors to comfort Hanan at the death of his father. 
But when they came to Annan, the princes of Annan thought that the messengers of David were, were, um, were coming actually to spy out the land and to overthrow it. And they took the messengers and shaved their beards off and cut their garments, and the messengers were greatly ashamed. Now think about what had happened here. They were royal ambassadors. They, they weren't coming as, as uh, servants. They weren't coming as beggars. They were coming as royal ambassadors to minister comfort, to bring comfort to this new king who was king because his father died. And these princes completely misassessed the, the situation and thought that the messengers of David, they were actually undercover. And so they took these messengers and they treated them spitefully. And so David went to them when he heard about it. He went to these messengers who were at Jericho at this time and said, stay, just stay at Jericho till your beards are grown so you don't come back to Jerusalem with shame. And I'm sure he brought him new clothes, too. And the messengers were sent by a king, and then they were received with dishonor. They were sent with a message of comfort, but they were greeted with reproach and humiliation. They were sent to Ammon as ministers, but they were given disgrace. These messengers were ashamed because of, because of how they were treated, how they were made to look. So everybody in Ammon thought that these men actually came to spy out and, and lied about being messengers to comfort Hannon. Adam and Eve had everything provided for them in the garden. They lacked nothing. They enjoyed both the presence of God and the creation of God. They knew nothing of death. We know nothing of knowing nothing of death. There's death all around us, but Adam and Eve knew nothing of death from it, all the way up from, they knew nothing of human death. They knew nothing of animal death. They would shortly, but not up to this point. They knew nothing of, of even uh, plants dying. Nothing had, nothing, their death was nowhere. Yeah. Death entered through sin. Mm -hmm. So they knew nothing of death. They knew nothing about pain. All they knew was life and provision. Fullness. That's all they, that's all they had experienced. But the serpent suggested that something was missing. He made Eve think in a completely different, different avenue of thought than she, than she ever would have. Mm -hmm. He suggested that something had been withheld from them. The serpent suggested that they really weren't full. Mm -hmm. That there really was something better, something beyond, something else than what they had. Of all the things man had been given, temptation was a new experience among all the things that they had experienced so far, and they failed the temptation. Paul reveals to us that Eve, Eve was deceived. She believed a lie, but Adam wasn't deceived. He just ate just because she did. She, Adam wasn't even deceived. Well, at that moment that they ate, Adam and Eve were shamed. They were ashamed. As soon as they ate it, they knew that they knew what they had done. They would believed a lie. They had just brought on themselves the injury of transgression and the hurt of iniquity, and their immediate experience was shame by guilt. They were ashamed. For the first time, man experienced, the, uh, they experienced shame. Man was ashamed at the garden. And because of that, every, every living person after them would also partake of this experience of shame because of guilt and because of sin. After Adam and Eve sewed fig leaves together to cover their nakedness, then they heard the, the voice of the Lord walking in the garden and they hid. You notice they hid after they covered themselves? Even their covering, they were ashamed. They were ashamed even of their covering. They were ashamed that they were naked. They were ashamed of how they covered themselves. And they answered the Lord. We, were, we ate of the, of the fruit and we were naked and so we hid they knew that they were unworthy when they heard the voice of the lord the, the the joy that they had once had had withered away because of their shame the shame was a thief it took from them what god had given to them 
their life had begun to pale. The Lord said, the day you eat of it, you shall die. And their life had begun, begun to pale and to wane away. Their eating of the fruit had